Uh, hello YouTube, I'm going to be trying to be really quick with this because it's like 2 o'clock in the morning and I'm tired but this is a DVD and cinema ticket update, there's not many DVDs but there's a fair few cinema tickets so I'm going to have to be fairly quick with it so to start off I'm going to show you two DVDs that I don't actually own, I actually went to them from the library but I've been going to my university library a lot more recently uh, they've got basically every single film in the world there. They've got massive shelves and shelves of stuff that you can get free if you're a student. So I've been renting out the Asia Extreme titles that they've got, which are a load of them because I've been wanting to watch loads of them for ages. And I got these two uh, DVDs, uh, Tetsuo the Iron Man and Tetsuo 2 Body Hammer. If you've not seen these films, you've got to watch them. They're really, really fucking weird, but they're really, really good. Uh, I think they've been released on Blu-ray in the UK now. Uh, these Titan DVDs are the prints go for a firm on eBay. But uh, the first one in particular is really, really cool, a really experimental film. It's really short, so it's only about an hour long. But uh, it's definitely worth watching if you're into sort of Asian film and uh, science, science fiction. Uh, I think these are both from 2002. I think this one is a later re release because it's got the, old, it's got the new 18 symbol on it. This is the original release of Tetsuo 2. Uh, which isn't quite as good as the first, but it's still very weird, it's got a lot of gore in it. So I would highly recommend those two films. Again, like I said, I don't actually own these DVDs, loan from the library, but uh, if you can track these down, then definitely give them a watch. Uh, the next DVD, well, the final DVD I've got to show you, I did actually buy. It's another Asia Extreme one, but uh, I got it for 99 pence from a charity shop, which, considering it has three films in it, is a really, really good bargain. Uh, this is Infernal Affairs, uh, the trilogy, which isn't focusing, but the text big enough to see it. Uh, I've not seen any of these films, so I was a blind buy, but I've heard that they're really, really good, especially the first one. And we want to watch them for ages, so 99p for all three of them, you can't really argue. Uh, the, I think the films range, I think it says in the Swans, actually. 2002-2005 films range from, the, the actual DVDs are from 2004 and 2005. Uh, the 15 certificates don't line up, which is a bit annoying, because the rest of the Swans do. But to take these out and show you, uh, this is Infernal Affairs 1 from this 2004 DVD. Uh, I think this is released in cinemas as well. You get uh, a nice booklet with some notes in it, which is all very nice. Uh, and you get in each of them, you get like a Tartan video booklet as well. And here's Infernal Affairs 2. Uh, this isn't quite as good as the first, but it's still quite good. It's from 2004 as well, they both released in the same year. And you get a theatrical poster in a little booklet. Like in there. And there's this itself. And finally, Infernal Affairs 3. Uh, I don't think I looked at any of these on this, I'm not sure how good it's meant to be. But it's from 2005, this DVD, so it's slightly later than the others. And again, you get a buckler with, with more on. Uh, the, the back of the case for Infernal Affairs 3 has an absolutely massive spoiler for the first one on it, which is a bit annoying. So if you are if you do find this box out yourself and you haven't seen the films, don't look at the synopsis for Infernal Affairs 3 like I did. Because it's completely ruined the end in the first one. But uh, apparently these are really good. I'm very looking, for, looking forward to watching them. So that was very good buy. Uh, next up are the cinema tickets. I've got a fair few. I've got a boat at least 10, 15, I think. So I'll try and get through them. First, though, I've got some lobby cards, which are pretty interesting. They've got a probably behaviour, uh, Kamiko, the treasure hunter, uh, Hyena, which I've been meaning to see this week. I'm going to have to catch it at some point this week because it's coming off after this. Uh, Duke of Burgundy, which I did see, I'll talk about that in a minute. And uh, the Sailor Princess Kaguya, which comes with a load of art cards, which is very really nice. I picked these up from the box office till at the me local cinema uh, I didn't realise they had them before I've actually noticed them before but I'm going to try and collect as many of them as I can now so they're nice and now onto the actual tickets themselves uh, this first one that was also in me previous updates but uh, as a different cinema it's a Kingsman Secret Service which is very blurry I think that might be the camera lens actually it's a little bit better now yeah, it's, that's Kingsman Secret Service. There's a second time I watched this, still just as good. Definitely watch that. Still in cinemas because it's obviously done really well at the box office. 
Uh, next is Love is Strange. I got the last ticket for this. This sold out after I bought a ticket because it was in a tiny screen. Only about 50 seats. This is really good. Uh, check that out. I think it's less cinemas now, but we'll be on DVD soon. Uh, Project Almanac is a film that I wasn't really going to see originally, but then there was nothing else on at the time, so I thought, why not? Uh, it's, I thought it was quite good. It, it, it does suffer from the shaky and bloody problems. I mean, the camera work is fucking all over the place. It's absolutely very annoying to watch. But if you can look past that, it is a decent film. Uh, Black Hat is the next one, which is really, really long. It's like 140 minutes, and that's way too long for the actual film. The, the last hour of it is really, really good. Like, if you've seen Heat or any other Michael Mann film, it's his normal action. It's really, really good action for the last hour. But all the stuff before that is really, really long-winded and boring, so most people will get bored before the actual good stuff starts happening. Uh, this is the biggest cinema ticket in the world. I don't know... I, I, I honestly don't know why that happened, uh, it's, but it is... Uh, the the text on it is pretty much completely faded. This is the Grand Budapest Hotel, which is shown as part of Bafta Screen in the Cine World. Uh, again, that was just as good as the first time. Except they showed the first four five minutes in the wrong aspect ratio, which basically completely ruined it, as you'd know if you've seen the film. Uh, next one is The Duke of Burgundy, which is what you do that card for. Uh, it's a really, really, really good film. It's really visually pretty. If you, it, I was glad I saw it in the cinema because it looked really good on the big screen. Especially one sequence towards the end, which is absolutely fantastic on the massive screen sound system. It's definitely a film with more visual appeal than story, because the story's pretty standard romantic sort of melodrama thing. It's basically Fifty Shades of Grey, except a lot more tamer and there's no men in it. But uh, if you've catch this, I think you can get it on Curzon On Demand, because it's not an official eye film. I'd definitely check that out. The uh, next one, I actually got a free coaster with really, really good artwork. This film has got the absolute best poster artwork I've ever seen, and it is Catch Me Daddy, which is a British independent film. Uh, if you're not if you're not seen it, it's really, really good. It is bleak, uh, very, very fucking bleak and depressing, and the ending is absolutely terrible. But uh, it's still really, really worth a watch if you're a fan of British cinema, and especially if you get a free coaster with it, if you... Look online, look at the poster for it. The poster is absolutely fantastic. I'm, I really want a poster of it myself in the room. Uh, next film is It Follows, independent horror film uh, released by Icon. And this was, it's not quite as good as The Babadook, which is the last horror film that Icon released. But it's really, really good. It's very unique. It's different from all other horror films, so it doesn't get boring. It's got a very nice theme. It's really well made. It's got everything going for it, really, so might as well. Give it a try if you're a fan of horror films. Uh, the next one is a White God, or Fehur Isten, I think that's pronounced. Uh, this is a film I've been looking forward to for absolutely ages, and it did not disappoint. It's very, very great. Uh, some of the, the animal work in it is absolutely outstanding. I'm really looking forward to getting a DVD of this, and hopefully there's loads of special features about the animal training and stuff, because what, the, what they get the massive hordes of dogs to do in it is absolutely incredible. So definitely check that out. It's, it's absolutely failed at the box office. Things left at every cinema now two weeks after release, but check it out on DVD. And the final ticket I've got for you is Is Al Takahata and His Tale of Princess Kaguya, which is a documentary about the production of The Tale of Princess Kaguya. They did actually show the film as well as a preview screen, but I skipped on that because they were showing it. Well, I, so someone asked them on Twitter that there was, and whether it was dubbed or subtitles. And the cinema responded that it would be dubbed, but the documentary after it would be subtitled, obviously. So I chose to skip the film and just see the documentary, so I'd see the film subtitled next week. And then apparently I looked on Twitter and apparently they did actually show it subtitled in the first place, that's really annoying. But uh, this documentary is really, really good. If you're, if you're a fan of animation like I am, it's one of the most interesting documentaries ever. It's really, really... If, I imagine it would be better if I'd actually seen the film first, Like, but... If this is showing near you, I think some cinemas in London are showing it like on general release or often a one-off. So uh, if you can see this and you're interested in see the Ghibli and stuff like that, then definitely, definitely see that. And that is the update under 10 minutes, thankfully, so I'll see you next time.